thinking like, what's my wife gonna think? Like she's like, kind of like pushing at me. Wait, like, can we just stop for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty-one years old. Yeah. Married. Yeah. How long you been married for, bro? It'll be two years in January. Nineteen years old. Yeah. Married. Yes, sir. I'm not. I am not being offensive. Why? Ethan, what's up, bro? Dude. Nothing much. I'm just happy to be here. Right just, on, man. Just met you not that long ago, a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. I was like, yeah, this dude's awesome. Well, thank you, man. Thanks for coming. And thank you for going to my event. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It was definitely uh, always nice to not only share some information, but meet new people. And I've heard a little bit about you from uh, BCNA, joining probably my first real awesome networking group that I partook in. Is that a word? If I partook in? Sure. Yeah. yeah it works. <laughs> uh, but these are my favorite type of podcasts because there's no there's no agenda because I know absolutely nothing about you other than auto detailing. That's literally the only I know that you showed up to my event. I know you do mobile detailing and you're part of BCNA. That's it. That's that's it. that's the basis. Yeah, dude. So it's it's all up from here. Oh yeah. 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 Start at the ground and you're like, well, can't go further down, so yeah, it can only go up. <laughs> it can only go up. <laughs> so are you uh, a native? You born and bred here? Yep, born and bred, Pennsylvania, Berks County, um, pretty much all my life. Actually, all my life I've been here other than, you know, traveling right on. Um, out inside of Pennsylvania and just born and raised here, and that's, that's it. Do you dig it? Yeah, I mean, I dig Berks County. Yeah. It's um, a kind of everybody knows everybody. That's for um, sure. I mean, you... You go down the street and you're like, wait, you know him? I know you from this place. And it's just like connections everywhere. Right on. Um, so I thought that was that's a pretty cool part of Berks County. And of course I'd I'd love to expand outside of Berks County at, at some point, but I definitely love Berks County just because of that aspect of it's an accountability point too. Mm -hmm. Because I'll go out and if I act a certain way. I'm acting this way, and like someone was like, "I know that guy. Why is he acting like that?" It's like <laughs> that comes back on me, and it's yeah. like I don't want to do a business I with know. that guy because he's acting like an idiot. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of too. Yeah, because I'm not perfect, nowhere near perfect, mm -hmm. and you just have those bad days, you know, and you're just like, "Ah, oh, shit, I've never, like <laughs> done that," you know. And I learned that a long time ago because I remember just just hanging out at a diner or somewhere, um, and I was like, "Yeah, Dave Mattis, blah blah blah," and it, I, I love Dave. Me and Dave are fucking we're homies and always talk good about dave but it was just surprising when i mentioned dave manis this woman actually stopped what she was doing turned around to see who i was and turned back mm -hmm. and that one little thing told me this place is super small you have no idea who you're around mm -hmm. you know and it's different because when you come from new york because you know, i'm from like you know long island new york new york city new york there's so many freaking people there like you could live next to your friends three blocks over and never run into them because it's that big but you come here no dude it's just yeah so that little completely thing, different yeah that that little thing that happened i was like wow this place is really small so you're definitely right about that um but i'm gonna just state the obvious you seem like a very young man did you go to college i didn't no. okay did you so you went to zero college oh nope. when did you graduate high school bro 2020. <laughs> 2020. Holy shit. So you're, what are you, 20? 21. Dude, you're my kid's age. Yep. You could be my son. I, I could be your son. Yeah, 21. <laughs> okay, 21 years old. Yep. College not for you. You own an auto detailing business. Yep. When did you start that? I started it March of this year. So I went part-time over at Auto Spa. Mm -hmm. um, I was over there since a freshman in high school. So Stay I was there for, yep, on Sea Hill right. Road. Okay. Yep. And I was there for over five and a half years. I mean, I loved pretty much majority of it. Um, I mean, it wasn't easy work. Mm -hmm. It was hard work. And I loved the detailing portion of it. I mean, I didn't really, I loved it at the time. And then it got kind of cut as soon as COVID right. hit. Um, kind of shut everything down as far as that. Um, and even school-wise, like, everything was cut. I was getting ready to graduate. I didn't really – I knew I wanted to do my own thing, but I didn't know what. 
I tried like web design. I was like, it's not for me. It's not for everyone, nope. Ethan. No, it's not easy. <laughs> like kudos to you, man. Let like, them know that, Ethan. Yeah. Web design. Preach. Not easy. <laughs> not easy. Um, so I give it to you, man, Thanks, for sure. Bro. Appreciate that. Um, and long story short, went there full time after high school because I was like, I have no idea what I want to do, but I know I got to make money somehow. Right so um, stayed there for a little bit. It was about two years. And then I went part time and just kind of like was dry. It was dry for like two months. And I'm like, shoot. And I'm like thinking like, what's my wife going to think? Like she's like kind of like pushing at me. Wait, like, can we just stop for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 21 years old. Yeah. Married. Yeah. How long have you been married for, bro? It'll be two years in January. I mean, cookie, you getting this, right? Yeah. <laughs> 19 years old. Yeah. Married. Yes, sir. I'm not, I am not being offensive. Why? Why? Mm -hmm. 19 years old. I mean, you, you got your whole life. And again, I am not putting down marriage. I'm married. No. I love being married. 19 years old. It's bold. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, you just knew. Like I, I had to lock it in. I had to lock it in. Put the <laughs> ring on it. I had to lock it in. I had to lock it in. I wasn't letting her go. So I was like, <laughs> I wasn't gonna play any games with her. Or mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, if, if I'm gonna be in for life, I'm in for life. So, dang. And you knew that at 19 years old. Yeah. Jesus. What does your wife do? She's a travel over at Boscov's Travel, mm -hmm. and she works on the back end of things of setting up the travel. I guess packages you would call it. Yeah. And um, she gets it done over there. She's been loving it. She just started there about three months ago. Um, she just made a job transition over the summer. Things weren't working out at her previous job. and No college for her either. She actually has a two-year degree in business administration. How old is your wife? She's 23. Ah, you went up the ladder. And a little bit, a little bit. I need a little <laughs> maturity in the game, yeah. you know? I, <laughs> I was tired of dating girls. I had to date a woman. Oh, my yeah. man. There he is. All right. Yeah. I like you more and more. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, dude. No doubt. That's it's just those are some bold moves. Well, you know what? You seem like a bold dude because I mean, you're married at 19, he's collegeing for you. And now you thought to yourself, I gotta do something different, drying up here at Auto Spa. You love the place, but now you're like, I'm going to start my own thing. Yeah. You got to be a bold individual to even think like that, dude. So what made you just say to yourself that one day, you know what, I'm just going to do it on my own? Essentially, it came down to, I mean, it was boiling up. And I was like, what am I going to do? Time's pretty much flying by at that point. It yep. was about a year and a half in, and I'm like, I'm bored. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't want to just... It was a routine, a mundane routine of backing out the cars, driving it in, cleaning the car wheels, and sending the car through. And I don't even see, like, the result, essentially, of a clean car. I'm you just, only see one part of it. Yep. Mm, yep. Okay. Yeah, the whole process of just getting everything prepped and then ready to go. Like, I'd talk to the customers, which was my favorite part of it um, at the time, but I wasn't even really able to do that because it was so it's so busy all the time. Right. Um, over at the car wash, it's more numbers. Um, how many cars can we do? It's not the quality usually of a car wash. Which I noticed. Where, yeah. Mm -hmm. You make yep. a good point. Yep. So detailing's a lot more in depth, and you can like take more of your time. You're gonna want to more take more time as far as detailing. Right. It's called detailing. It takes, <laughs> you know, it may take a detailer 15 minutes to do one wheel. It takes a car wash five minutes to do the whole car. Yeah, um, pretty much. And you're just going to get, you're getting a wash, uh, just a basic wash. You're not going to get deep into the wheel wells or anything like that. Um, essentially, where I was going with that is I couldn't just do not talking to anyone and not connecting with people. And that was where it hit. I was like, man, like, what can I do to get out of that? I know I wanted to do my own thing. What do I like about this that I can start up for a little cost in the scheme of business? Right. So I was like, auto detailing. That's it. 
And I just kind of branched off from there, like building it. And I'm like, what do I call it? I was just like, I'll just brand it off my name. And now like thinking about it, I'm like, oh, Ethan Lasher's auto dealer. It's kind of like long coming out. Mm. Um, so now I'm kind of like, all right, can I make it simpler? What can I branch off that's simple, easy to come out? And kind of thinking about going through a rebranding and just kind of figuring it out. Yeah, and I think now's the time to do it if you really wanted to do it because, I mean, you are a startup. Mm -hmm. You're not that established yet. If you really wanted to make a bold move, I would say better now because, like, I think at the event I told you, I never would have called my my business what it is now had I known what I know now back then, you know, because, yeah, it definitely comes off a little bit too much. Um, But there's no shame in it or anything, you know. Those things work. I mean, Charles Schwab, you know what I mean? Like people use their names. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you were thinking about that, you know, sure. Um, but how's it going so far, man? I had its ups and downs. Like I said, it, back in March, it was, I was kind of crapping my pants. I'm like two months in, I'm, I've had my first initial three details and I'm like sitting here. I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> and um, <laughs> like I was saying, like Ash, my wife, she was, Kind of like nagging me she's like what are you doing all day i'm like i'm trying to get clients like but no one's biting and i don't know what to do mm. <laughs> i'm just i didn't say that to her right but i, I was like I, it'll, they'll come they'll come <laughs> and finally it was beginning of may i started getting like bookings after bookings after bookings i'm like okay and it yeah. got to the point where i was like doing a detail and then the client would come pick it up. Another client would drop off their car. I'd do it overnight and have it done and ready, go to work, have that client pick up, and then have another client drop off, detail it overnight. they pick it up in the morning, another client drop off, wow. do it overnight. I was just like not sleeping. It felt like I was just like sleeping like three hours. Why do you think you had the uptick all of a sudden? <sighs> What'd you do differently? Honestly, I've, I mean, just like the posts, I guess, mm -hmm. like from social media, um, I got a lot of clicks from maps. The change in weather was huge. Mm. Um, everyone wants their car cleaned up after it's been freezing cold and salt. They're just demolishing their cars. So it's like seasonal? It seemed like, mm. it seems like, I mean, of course for a new business, I'm, it's hard to tell. Right. Um, right. and there was a lot of factors that I think went into it as far as. Like I said, like the season change, um, just kind of being consistent with my posts on social media. Um, so that way there was some work out there. Um, you do any advertising of any sort? I don't. Just word of mouth. Just word of mouth. Like the networking groups. Mm -hmm. in the so area. the networking groups, you, you did more than just BCNA? Yeah, I do BCNA, um, PRE, and then I recently went to the Pagoda and Business Network. Right on. That was, yeah. That was, those were all like, great groups I've found. I've gotten um, clients from there and also have been able to essentially give back and give back to the the people in those groups and give them referrals where I can. And it's been very cool. Just like talking to awesome people like you. I like you. I, I just, I just love that aspect of yeah. it. Just being able to just chat like with other business owners and like be hundred percent real with them and be like, you know, this, this is what I struggle with. And, you know, this is what I've been through, and I'm able to get feedback, and that's very cool. Yeah, it is good that, you you know, you forget about that aspect of networking. Like, right away you think, well, I want to meet these people because I want them to know I do auto detailing, and hopefully they can send me something. And, mm -hmm. like, you think that's the end of it, where you just make a really good point how it's like, you know what? You go there to almost just ask for help and go, hey, I'm struggling with this. What would you do? I'm struggling with that. What would you do? That's a smart move, man, because pride – can really mess with you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just won't do it because they feel like they could do it themselves. It's like a man who won't ask for directions. Mm -hmm. It's the same idea, dude. It's or like, even like read directions. <laughs> like right. putting together a table. It's like, no, I got this. No, I don't need fine. directions. I don't need directions. <laughs> That's a good point, though, dude. Going there just to get help, like not business wise, but like operational wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. You do a lot of one on ones? Yeah, I've had a lot of one on ones with the group just trying to. Um, really get a basis of like what they do and getting to know them and like where they came from. So I think that's very cool. And like anytime like I can help someone, I'm, I'm here. I mean, of course I, I may not be the most helpful just because 
I don't have the most experience. Like, right. I'm pretty much at square one. I mean, square one was March, but I, so I have a little bit of experience, but it's still a baby. Yeah, but sharing other people's posts and referring other people, mm -hmm. that's a lot of help though, dude. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's 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 one of the most easiest and non-cost um, or no-cost ways that you can help anybody. Mm -hmm. like just speaking highly of them, sharing their stuff, referring them, if they're worth your referral, because you got to be careful with that too. Don't just refer because you just want to refer. Because mm -hmm. I've been burned by that shit a few times. You know, absolutely. Um, so you were working at Auto Spa and doing your auto detailing. Mm -hmm. okay, and when was that moment when you were like, all right, bro, I got to go in both feet? I knew it was before it. Like I just took the the jump day in April. I just kind of let them know. Like I knew, let them know in the beginning when I went part time mm. um, that I was going to be uh, diving more in depth into into business. And they were like, "All right, cool. Like we appreciate it. Like you let us letting us know." Um, and they were really appreciative of me. Like giving them still like three days a week. Um, I gave a month notice before I went part time, and then. Two months before I like let them know, I was like, "That's it," and I was like, "I can even cover like your guys' vacation because I knew they were going to vacation." Super appreciative. It was like, I love those guys over at Spot. Right on. Like, they're it's cool. cool. We didn't burn that bridge. Yep. Right on. Yeah. And so. It's essentially, it's two different businesses still though, you know, because yeah. you got like really hardcore detailing, and then you got your car wash. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they both take a lot of effort. Of course, like I've oh, seen yeah. those guys. I mean. They may not have the best systems in place, but they're still they're working hard at mm -hmm. what they know, and I I give them a lot of kudos for that. Absolutely, right on, man. So it's November. November. How were uh, how are things doing? It picked up for about two weeks, and now it's now I'm starting to see it slow off. Mm. Um, so winter is winter is certainly coming. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. <laughs> So how do you think you're going to battle that? So this winter, um, I'm just kind of working on getting products set, getting my systems, fixing my automations and systems so that way I can run smoother come um, next season, get it nice and smooth flowing, and I can add to the team, and it's not just me doing everything. Just doing the details, doing the answering phone calls, having to turn everything off as I'm out doing a detail in order to answer a phone call. Right. Um, emailing everyone back that, <laughs> that needs a detail. Um, essentially just like losing my mind <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Welcome to entrepreneurship, my man. Yep. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but it's crazy that you're already thinking about setting up systems and building a team and you're what, not even a year in. Yeah. And yeah, you already see the benefit. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Cause I know that I won't be able to sustain it. If I'm not able to sustain it, it's it's not going to be worth it. It's just going to be nothing. And then if it's just me running it, it's not a valuable business for me to essentially sell off at some point, right? Um, and actually get the value out of the business, not just the it's the short term money, but also the long term return. Right on. How long do you think you want to do this for? The detailing business? Yeah, I mean you're already you're already putting your head into that perspective about. You know, features as far as your detailing company, how you know eventually you do want to sell it. How long do you think you want to be in that driver's seat? When the time comes to sell. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> once the the systems and everything's flowing, I mean, I would like to have it to the point where I don't necessarily have to be there all the time for it to run. Mm -hmm. um, so that way I can have a receptionist and like detailers that know where they're doing and I can trust them. And I know that's not going to be easy right. at all um, to find people that are going to be detailed and essentially have the skills to go about it. Cause what someone told me, um, a wise Brandon Moyer that you had on mm. your podcast before mm -hmm. it's, it's more than just uh, an easy job. It's more of, Detailing is like an art in a sense because if you're going to be detail-oriented, you have to get every single little little piece out, little dust out. Of 
course there's going to be things that don't come out, mm -hmm. but you have to be able to be like, all right, this is, this is good. The customer's going to be appreciative of it. They're going to love it. Like right this on. is, this is a, this is what I was expecting. This is what I was expecting when I came to the, this company to get their car detailed and it's going to be interesting training someone and kind of like letting my hands off and like, got it. And kind of just let them do their thing. And of course there's going to be things that come along with it that like they're going to have a certain way to do it and it's going to get done right and com different compared to like my method of doing it. And as long as the job's done, I got to be like, that's great. As long as it looks th the same result. Cool. Right on. Cool. And you think that's going to happen for you next season? Yeah. Next season, I'm going to start cooking it up as far as trying to get a detailer in there. And um, whether I get an in-person receptionist or um, just a, like a, not mobile, but like just like from their place of right, you know, like they could be at yeah, home answering home. your phone. Yeah, calls, like right. an at-home receptionist, yeah, online admin, right? Something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, and get that rolling so that way it's set for when it gets busy come spring, um, as I'm anticipating, and just get that have all the systems in place so that way they're not like, Yo, what is this guy doing? He's not even running a business. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's what I don't want. Right. So I'm really honing in on getting that prep during the winter. Right on. How far away do you think you're from offering wrapping and tinting? Because you did mention that at the event, how you said you would want to go into that world eventually. I did. So it's based upon whether I have a shop ready or not, mm. um, because I won't be able to do that mobily right. as far as wrapping and tinting, because you have to have everything super clean because you don't want any dust particles getting in between the wraps or the window tints. Right. Um, then it'll look like crap. Uh -huh. And I don't want to deliver crap work. Right. I want right. quality work. And um, I want to deliver quality. And that's what I definitely strive to do for sure. Do you have you like do you have experience in that? Have you done tinting and wrapping? No, I have to get training on it. Oh, and that's also okay. another key part too. Right on. Yeah. Where do you think um well, where do you think you want to have that shop? Definitely somewhere around here, because yeah. um, I'm as I'm establishing um, my my own personal brand, and then as well as like the business, um, I think it'll be the best place. And then a main road like your office mm. that we're at now, it's um, a great place to have it because you're just getting traffic through all day long. Yeah. Um, so you just you see the sign and you think of, oh, that's Freddie's place. <laughs> Um, so something that's right there in front of your face right on. that you can pass by and it's like, oh, there's Ethan yeah. doing his thing. What's your, uh, your timeline for that? I had a, I had a timeline and then things kind of got finagled it in my head. I'm like, man, is this the right decision? Cause mm -hmm. I had a, a shop in line essentially. I still do if I, I want to follow through with it. Yeah. Um, now I'm kind of like having second thoughts and like the numbers are all added up and I'm like, is it worth it? Do I just go out and get my own place? Right. Cause this is a lease situation. And I'm like, do I go out, and get my own, own place where I can just, if I'm going to put this money into it, I know I'm definitely going to get the return. I don't have to Another asset. worry about. Yeah. That's what I thought about this place. You know, it's the same thing. You know, you, you think about rent and you're like, well, I'm just going to redo this whole place. You're going to sit up for your specifications, pay all this rent, have a lease. Nobody says you have to get renewed on that lease. Mm -hmm. And nobody says any of those things. You know, or do you want your own place that you own? You know you're going to have it. And then, hell, you can sell the business. People sell the buildings with the businesses in the mm -hmm. futures, you know, or you can just lease it out to the new owners of the business that you sell. It's, it's so many different things that you open yourself to. So I get that too, bro, for sure. Yeah. You know, but that's cool, man. It's very inspiring to see someone young with like a good head on their shoulders doing it the right way. Yeah, it's kind of rare these days because you see a lot of like um, people that want to be instant success. You know, they expect to just 
almost be given all their success where you realize like, hey, you know what? You're going to have to work your ass off to get to that point where you are successful. Yeah. It's just refreshing, dude. It's very refreshing to see that you're just, you know, even at such a young age as far as business, you're still striving and know where you're going to take it to that next level. So I give you a lot of kudos for that, bro. Because that's, that's a rare commodity, man. Thank you. You, know, you almost just like, there's been days where I think to myself, I feel bad for the future of America because I have no idea what the hell's happening. Mm-hmm. You know, and no, I try it's, to. It's nuts. I yeah, mean, it as is. To, to, as today's election day. Did today's you vote? election day. I didn't yet. I'm going with my wife after she's done with work. We usually go together and do the whole the whole shebang. You got you got your sticker yeah, on. Yeah, I went with my wife this morning. Yep. Yeah. Went and picked her up. You know, I was in early this morning. I had to do a little work before I had you guys come in today. Picked her up, did the voting thing. Yeah, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta vote because if you don't, you can't complain. Yep. I mean, that's just the way it is, bro. Yep. Yeah, dude. So, I mean, Ethan, I, I just, you know, it's it's just really good to see some this guy. You know, McCookie. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here. I hire McCookie to produce this show, and the guy's dropping phones. <laughs> you know, look, <laughs> look how ready he is. So Ethan, it's funny. Just leave this stuff in, man. This is it's all comical. It's just funny. That it works. It, it works. does work. Yeah, <laughs> we're so laid back here, man. Like we're professional. We want it to look great and everything sounds great, uh, but we're still having a good time, man. Oh yeah. You know, it's just all about having a good time and just you know, uh, I'm not. It's it's like. Even that's part of the brand, essentially. You know, showing people that you can have a good time. You're not so stiff. I hate stiff. And I remember my first networking meeting, I went with, get this, I went to my first network networking meeting in Berks County. Khakis, blue shirt, tie, hair all, like, combed. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, was, <laughs> I, I can remember already like, tell, like, that's not, that's not your style. No. Like, you were man, just... No. Terrible. Terrible. I mean, that's, and it works for a lot of people. And for them, it's perfect. For me, no. No, man. And I realized that was almost, and, and not, I wasn't totally bold, but I realized, listen, Fred, if you want people to work with you, you have to be somewhat yourself, dude. I mean, you can't be totally stiff or a different person. Mm-hmm. For me, it's just, that's just how it worked for me. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously, you know, you won't attract everyone with the way you are, but at least you'll attract the people that you want to work with. Right, you know, so yeah, same thing with the podcast. Like, yeah, we we're, we're going to that professional level. It looks really great now, and and all those good things. But we're still us. We're yeah. still gonna have a good time, man. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. Yep. Change the channel, kid. Yep. <laughs> you know, like that's it. You're you're not stuck here, man. You know, so no editing, McCookie. <laughs> Leave your mess up. McCookie's mess up day one of filming the new podcast. <laughs> <laughs> So cool, man. So it looks like you got a, a bright future like ahead for you. I, I want to say, what do you? What's next for Ethan Lasher? But I think you told me. What's next? Yeah, that's what I've been thinking about, and yeah. I'm just like, as I'm going into winter, I'm I'm prepping for that, and sometimes I don't know what the heck I'm prepping for. Like yeah. I I know like just like the systems and everything for the detailing part of it, but then I get caught up, I get caught up in, you know. Do I go out and do a different venture of like something totally different, like real estate or <laughs> So you're thinking about different things to do entirely. Oh yeah. Like just like it happens all the time. I don't know if it's gonna be a distraction or if it's like a plus because it, or am I gonna be like spreading myself too thin of where I or do I just run with one thing? Like kind of like the Jeff Bezos. Like he didn't get wealthy off of multiple different things. Like he right. just Amazon, and that was it. I guess it depends on what satisfies that thirst, dude. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, for me, I was all about my business for so long, and not that I'm not, I'm not all about it now. But now I feel like I need to do different things because I don't want it to be monotonous, like you were saying. You know, just having one part of that detail, I could mm-hmm. see how that would drive you insane. Where I at least had a little control and like maybe I don't want to do websites today. Maybe today I'll do SEO or maybe today I'll do advertising or I'll design something. So I do have at least that much power. 
But you get to a point where you're like, you know what? I got to do something different, which is where the podcast comes in. Mm -hmm. Like even though it's just a podcast and I I really do do it for fun um, because I just like doing it. It's really a break from my day. It's a break from five days straight of just, you know, marketing, websites, advertising. It's like, okay, you know, I get to meet new people, you know, and essentially it builds my personal brand which is what I'm striving to work on now because I do want to make that change. I think I need to um, start doing different things to just keep it fresh in my mind. You know, I need to do different things for challenges. You know, like I'm not saying web design is not a challenge. It's You've definitely it hard. So yeah, you just like you got to do something different and you only mm-hmm. get one ride in this rock, dude. Yep. You know, so what are you going to do? You know, and hey, if you want to – Stay on the same ride and you're freaking happy and content doing it, God bless you. I hope you do it forever and I hope you're always happy. Some people just need to get off and try a different ride, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's kind of like what I'm leaning to, but not so drastic like you. You're like, well, maybe I should do real estate. I'm like, hey. <laughs> but that's a young man, you know, young man, you know, you're 21. You're like, you got your whole world ahead of you, dude. You know, what about kids, man? You feeling like kids at any time or what? I'll have a few years yet. Probably like at least like two years. And then it's right like, on. all right, now we, now we can move forward. <laughs> yeah, so you want to get like everything established. Yeah, I would like to, but I know that's some things just don't go as planned. <laughs> so oh, they never will. Yeah. I can I can tell you that much. Yep. You know, but it's okay because the 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 wrench in the work sometimes are happy surprises. But like it's it's get that foundation. You get mm-hmm. the foundation, you're in. Then you can go do crazy shit. You know, but. It's it's great, dude. It's it's freaking awesome. I'm so I'm so happy for you, man. That you just found something that you want to do and you want to strive at it. Yeah, you, you already have a good head on your shoulders where you're ready to set systems in place next year, and you already know you want to hire people. Believe me, stick to that road, dude. Because I was a one man show for so long. I'm still essentially a one man show with certain aspects of the business. But if you can put that in your mindset right away that you want to build a team so you can do other things, God bless, bro the way to go good shit man well you listen ethan thanks for coming in today bro yeah i appreciate, I appreciate you having me yeah dude and I, you know what let's say let's bring him a cookie let's remember to bring ethan back in a year all right we're gonna bring you back in one year and we're gonna do like a review and go all right bro what yeah. we got going on yeah and then hopefully we can maybe i can get a little backstory on your basis that'd be cool yeah <laughs> Little 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 Freddie Rewind. Listen to old listen to old episodes. Old episodes. Yeah. <laughs> you got a few of those. Yeah, I have many. Oh, you okay. might have, yeah, just uh, look look up Fred Talk on uh, Spotify. Yeah, just type in Fred Talk. You'll see my big head. You'll see this. <laughs> and yep. uh, press play somewhere. And you'll dig it. But Ethan, Ooh. thanks a lot, man, for coming in. Good luck to you. And I'll see you one year from today. Sounds good. I look forward to it. Hey. Thanks for checking out this episode of Fred Talk. If you totally got into what you just saw, make sure you like and subscribe so you never miss another episode. Check out the playlist because there's other cool people too. And if you can't watch all the time, check it out on any podcast outlet. Don't forget, your Uncle Freddy loves you. Peace. Peace.